Vicky Romaine with Cheerful Greetings. And today we're going to take on another fairly old technique. And it is called burnished watercolors. So let's see what we can do about fixing a card with this technique. The first thing you would need is uh, a dauber, finger dauber, or you can use a cosmetic a sponge if you have one. Um, either one of these will work fine. Next, you want uh, some stamps and you want uh, images, uh, flowers are a good example, uh, that are open. In other words, you don't want uh, solid uh, petals or anything solid. You want your uh, image to uh, have a lot of open areas because that's where you're going to put your color. So now we're going to get out our acrylic block and I have some stamps here. Um, all of them are flowers, different style flowers. And I'm not going to put just one uh, stamp on here. I'm going to do a speedy uh, stamping process and I'm going to put three. And they're going to be three different ones and actually they've got there are almost three different sizes. And uh, I'm using my Memento Tuxedo Black. And uh, that's what I'm going to be stamping with. I'm double checking to make sure I've got my card stock facing the right direction. The face of the card is four and a fourth by five and a half. What I'm going to do is stamp my three flowers here all at one time using my ink. And um, I'm not going to fill the front of the card completely. And uh, you will see why in a few minutes. But we'll put these on. And I don't have a, any particular um, design. In other words, I don't have them in a particular pattern. I'm just uh, having them fairly close to each other. And also I'm, I'm trying to get, make sure I have it inked well. Now that I have it inked, I'm gonna stamp my cardstock. And if you'll notice, one of the flowers is off the edge. And when you stamp something like this and you're doing it background, it's always good to have uh, one of your items going off the edge of the card. It makes it look more natural. And I'm re-inking my uh, stamps now. And this time, instead of moving the um, cardstock around, I'm moving the, um, excuse me, instead of moving the uh, stamps around, I'm moving the cardstock. That makes it easier for me. I'm trying to work out a place uh, that I think will look nice. I don't want it too crowded and I don't want the same kind of flower next to each other. Now you will notice that next to the um, fold of the card, there's a really no flower or no stamp there. Uh, but this one here is a kind of an extra blank spot, so I'm going to put a flower here. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. I'm not going to worry about the area uh, toward the foe. We'll finish up uh, stamping here. Got one more that I want to put on. Now that area over to the foe will be left blank. Now we get to the technique part in just a minute. 
I'm going to clean my stamps there, and then I'll put them away because I like to try to keep my stamps fairly clean if possible. I'm pleased with the arrangement of my flowers on the front of my card. And so we are going now to put some color on the card. And I'll be using uh, two inks, and it just happens that both of them are from Stamping Up. One color is Sage Shadow, and the other one is Brave Burgundy. I hope they will go together and uh, give a nice appearance on the card because I have not used this combination before. So let's get my uh, finger dauber and we will put um, some color on the card. What I will be doing is taking my finger dauber and making a very small circle and then I will gradually enlarge it and the whole time I'm pushing that ink into the cardstock. And that's where you get the burnishing from, is because I'm burnishing the color into the cardstock. both of my colors on and the next thing we're going to do is add our watercolors now I have two or three watercolor sets but I seem to come back to this one all the time it's the cheapest one I have but yet uh, I, I really like the colors and all and I have my water um, pen um, this is a pen that holds water up in the base of it or where I, or the handle of it and um, my top I lost, so I had to make do with the 
pin top to keep the uh, water from coming out of the pin. So let's add a little color to our flowers. We've got some color on it, but let's add some more. And this time it's going to be watercolors. And so we are putting um, some yellow in here. I want to make it a little brighter. First, I want to put a little more um, ink in here. I feel like I have a space here that's too white. So I'm just going to add a little more before I use my watercolor, do my watercolors. I, I felt like I was missing a spot. I'm trying to get the water to flow out of my pen. So I put a little yellow in with it so it won't be pure water. And um, I will be adding this yellow to bring out the flowers. And if you notice, both the uh, ink and the watercolor are not limited to the flowers. I do some of the petals and I also do some of the uh, background uh, cardstock. So you don't necessarily have to just stay inside the flower petals. You want this to look kind of splotchy, I guess you could say. I may dab my watercolor every once in a while with a uh, napkin just to pick up the extra uh, water that I don't want on my card. I have a couple of pieces of cardstock here on my table. I'm going to try and see if any of them will work. This is way too busy. Let me see if I can find something else that will work with this card. Must have something around here. Um, give me a minute or two, and I think I know where there's a, a piece of cardstock that will match it. And it's kind of a teal color. So let me see if I can find it and we'll use it. Here we go. I have the, uh, some teal cardstock here. First, let me put out my cutter. And we'll see about cutting off a piece. And if you look over at the card beside my cutter, I think we'll find that it uh, will go with it fairly well. I first cut off a two inch piece and um, I think that's going to be a little wide because I want my flowers to show up and have the green just as a, a small uh, edging. I don't want that to be uh, overbearing. So I'm going to cut this two inch piece in half and we'll go with uh, an inch strip down the side and then afterwards I'll be cutting it again um, the other direction to make it five and a half inches long since my card is five and a half inches tall.
I'm pleased with this. I think that'll work. I'm going to use my label here, and I have a stamp with a bird on it, and it says, a little bird told me. And uh, I'm going to let that be my sentiment. So we'll just stamp it here on the, the label. I'm using my adhesive gun here to put the glue on the back of my little strip. And, that, and then we'll be just about through. I want to try to get it on here straight. And that kind of gives a finishing touch to the card. Next, we'll put on my sentiment, and it could go anywhere on the card you would like. It would go up, it would go nicely up at the top or to the side. Um, really doesn't matter on this particular card. I'm going to just put mine over to the side in the middle. And here's another card I made using the same technique. Uh, I don't like it as well. Um, and my um, sentiment doesn't show up uh, as well as the bird does. And the more I was looking at this bird, I went back and colored it. And if you want to look at the uh, last frame in this video, you will see this card um, with the but uh, with the excuse me, with the bird that has been uh, colored with Copic markers, and I think you will agree that it looks much better and pops out a lot better. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll find something in it that that you like, and maybe try it out. And um, if you will, please come back and see me and see what else I have in store for you for next time. And in the meantime. Have a great crafting day, and don't forget, please subscribe. Bye.